system. Southwestern Colorado, around Ridgeway, between Ridgeway and Telluride. I don't know the name of the peak, but um, they're all beautiful down there. And what about this scene caught your attention? I mean, I know you love aspens because you painted a couple of them here and there, but. <clears throat> if you look at the reference, it, what caught my attention was the the clarity of the information, the clarity of the shapes. That there, <clears throat> there's a, a clear separation between the snow and light, snow and shadow, mountain and shadow, mountain and light, and the, the tree mass, the upright aspen mass, and then the road mass. With the fence separate, everything separates, and then I can deal with each of those shapes, designing those shapes to get uh, uh, a pleasing arrangement, but it will still be very clear information for the viewer. And how do you go about picking your colors? The colors, uh, I like to look at the colors like notes on a keyboard. I don't really pick the actual note. I, I, I pick the order. Because you can change a key when you're uh, playing music, you can change the key so you don't have to touch any specific note. <clears throat> What's more important is the, the order. So I, I can then decide on what my light source, the color of my light source, the color of the reflected light, and then, uh, and then almost, uh, as long as there's a harmony, I can almost arbitrarily assign a hue to any given mass. Now when it comes to your color palette and how you kind of organize everything, is that up to you or is that mainly your assistant's job to keep everything in order? <clears throat> the color palette is has been the same for years where, where each color goes as in, in a color wheel. So I, I start from the cool red through the warm red, oranges, yellow, yellow green, greens, blue greens, blue, blue violet to violet. And then with a section for uh, the earth tones. So it's always the same. So when I start mixing colors on my palette, the chemistry of the paint uh, makes it so I, I can't, in my head, I don't always know what hue it is. So that's where uh, Caleb and Robbie come in. They, they can separate those uh, mixed colors. And then when I'm, when I'm ready to move on, they'll put that pile of paint where it goes because they can identify the hue. And then I can go back and if there's a pile of paint next to where the greens are, I know that's the hue of it. Um, what was the question? <laughs> that was good. And as far as your assistant, I know that you've had a couple different assistants over the years helping you out. Have they ever messed with you and put the wrong colors in the wrong places just to see what you would do? Yes. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> it, it happened. Um, it's happened a few times. And does it turn out okay? Or yeah. is it kind of like, uh, start over? Yeah, it turns out okay because it's it's not again it's not the specific note. As long as I use like once I had a student who left a pile of dark neutral and <clears throat> I didn't like to waste uh, any paint, so I, I put it and used it as the harmonizer for the painting. And then at the end of the painting, I was painting a full aspen white. My wife comes in, looks at the the reference, and looks at my paintings. And, what are you doing? Well, it wasn't a dark neutral, it was a viridian green that, oh. that I thought was neutral. But I knew that I had used it uh, in a harmonious way to, as a, like a common denominator. So I just changed the title from Autumn Aspen to Spring Aspen. And it was the first one to sell. Oh, that's 